It is said that in 490 BCE, a Greek soldier named Pheidippides ran all the way, 40 kilometers, from the surroundings of the Greek town of Marathon to Athens to deliver critical information, the victory of the Greek army on Persians. He made the awaited announcement and collapsed, dead of exhaustion. <laughs> Thankfully, the world has evolved ever since. And nowadays, thanks to new technologies, the most effort it takes to transmit information at such a distance is the click of a button. And in just a few seconds, anyone can share their ideas, art, and passion with everyone in the world. The internet started being used massively in households in the late 1990s. Google was founded around the same time in 1998. And the first social media, media site, Six Degrees, created in 1997, was the beginning of a new era. Followed in 2006 by Facebook, which now also owns WhatsApp or Instagram, these apps created a world where everyone can interact faster than the time it takes me to say TEDx. I personally was born only four and a half months after Steve Jobs announced the launch of the iPhone to the world. A mini device that would revolutionize the way we all communicate with one another. And it quickly became essential to all of us. Nowadays, no one leaves their house without it. For instance, could all of you who have a smartphone with you right now please raise your hand? Pretty much everyone, as far as I can see. I also have mine in my pocket at the present moment because of how helpful it is. And just like that, I can take it out, turn around, open it, and take a selfie of all of us. Smile, people! And instantaneously, I can send it to all of you via email, which is uh, very simple with the phone. All of this took less than 30 seconds. And it is just one of the countless examples of how that digital revolution has and will continue to shake up the way we all interact, creating a global culture that unites us all together, ultimately leading to a more united world. Indeed, even though, even though the internet can be utilized for ill-intended usages, like all human inventions, the benefits it provides outweigh the bad. Some also advocate that our devices draw us away from the real world, preventing us from forming meaningful bonds. But several studies, for instance by Spanish sociologist Manuel Castells, the former minister of universities of Spain, or sociologists Lee Rainey and Barry Wellman, have shown that if used properly, the internet can have a totally inverse effect. As a teenager of the 21st century, my phone helps me stay in touch with my friends when I'm not with them and build a sense of belonging and community in our group. Similarly, living in expatriation, messaging apps allow me to communicate with my family by sending pictures, messages, or calling them, even though they live 6,593 kilometers away. I did not count, I used Google Map. Because these new technologies don't only connect people of the same age, but also create stronger bonds across generations, which is getting increasingly more important in our hyper-productive and individualized society. At a much broader level, our technologies also build the same sense of relationship with people we don't know, living in sometimes other continents, creating webs of connections that contribute to a globalized world. Let me explain myself. Reddit, for instance, is a website split into different communities called subreddits, each organized around one specific topic where users can all post content related to that group. There are subreddits about photography, Delhi, book suggestions, TED Talks, anything you can think about. And there are most certainly thousands of people from all over the world, all from different cultures and backgrounds, who've come up together to discuss it on the internet. And anyone can simply join this conversation and join the website and participate in these conversations. So what this means is that the internet allows people to build a greater community by staying in contact with people they know, but also getting united over shared interests with different yet similar people and understand better how other people live, which creates stronger bonds between all of us. Another critical aspect of the internet is how it now all makes us contributors to this global culture I've started talking about, and anyone can have an impact. Indeed, easy and cheap ways to create content on platforms like YouTube for videos, Twitch for live streaming, or TikTok for short content, empower today's net users to share their voice. The power to create is now shifted more than ever to the people. The, the lines between producers and consumers have blurred, leading to the concept of prosumers. There are plenty of examples of this. 
I could talk about memes and how they are a collaborative way to share thoughts, or touch on TikTok duets, which are all about further building on each other's humor or talent. But today, let's focus on Kaby Lame, a content creator I watch nearly every day. This name might not ring any bells, but his face might. This Senegalese 21-year-old living in Italy totals 1.9 billion likes on TikTok thanks to his short humoristic videos. But what's fascinating about his life and success is that a few years ago, he was an everyman. His family moved to Italy in a public housing complex when he was one, and he was one of the too many factory workers who lost their job when the pandemic hit. That's when he started doing TikToks, making fun of unhelpful life hacks that can be found all over the internet. Soon, he became known worldwide, embodying the stereotype of a content creator rising from the bottom to the top. But what I think made him so famous is that Kevin Lane's video can appeal to anyone in the world. Indeed, as you can see, he is known for his comical facial expressions. He highlights his human, friendly side, portraying himself as a friend we could all have. Moreover, all his videos are silent, which breaks the language barrier and makes it possible for everyone over the world to enjoy. His international renown proves that despite our cultural diversities, we all have the same need to laugh and interact together rather than get divided. Furthermore, through his homemade video style, he made a small but real difference in people's lives, making them happier. He, he represents that nowadays, each and every one of us, each and every one of you, has the power to use your voice to contribute to our global community. Thus, thanks to the empowerment it creates, the internet has also been used as a tool for some global social movements that had a concrete impact. Because on social media, messages can spark people's attention, get shared, become viral, and ultimately influence decision makers and plenty of others in the right direction. For instance, as you all know, the entire planet is and will be impacted by climate change. So the, ent so the entire planet has started to come together to try to fight it. And one important tool for that awareness is the same platform on which images or funny cats are shared, the internet. For example, take 19-year-old climate activist Greta Thunberg's speech at the United Nations in 2019, where she called out world leaders for the inaction regarding climate change. In itself, she was speaking to the country representatives that were in the room with her at that time. But her message reached a much wider audience thanks to the recording of her speech going around social media reaching people all around the world that all looked up to her, and it raised concern over the issues she was talking about. This can be seen with what you can currently see on screen, which is Google Trends. It's a website created by Google that uses graphs to compare the search volume of different, key of different keywords over time. This first graph regards Greta Thunberg. You can clearly see that in September 2019, the month she did her famous speech, the amount of time she was searched on browsers spiked as a result of her story going viral on the internet. But what's even more interesting is how, subsequently, the relative number of searches for climate change also spiked at the same time as the speech spread through the web. Both of these graphs coincide, which illustrates how the internet amplified her voice and made people more inquire about what she was talking about. And that knowledge is the first step toward concrete change. <laughs> what I find crazy is that the inter internet just intensified the fundamental aspects and need of human existence. I need to impact the world, and most importantly, to connect with others. For instance, this summer, I had the luck to go to the Lascaux Caves in France, a historical site I had been eager to visit since I was a child, and it was an eye-opening experience for me. These caves contain paintings that approximately date from 15,000 years ago. At that time, it's estimated that humans lived in groups that did not exceed 100 people for their whole life. Yet, they still created art for their own group to see, we're not exactly sure why. Perhaps it was for shamanic purposes or to keep a sort of record of the belief, mythology, or history of the tribes that created them. But what's certain is that it was art and it was an integral part of their culture. <laughs> These people obviously did not have access to modern technologies. So why am I telling you that? Well, it proves that humans have always wanted to be part of a common group and feel a sense of belonging shared over common practices. And the internet allows us to achieve that desire to its full potential. Like this caveman 15,000 years ago, humans shine when they get to share their creations with others, which is fantastic now that they can share them with more than 7 billion people through the internet and participate in the world's global culture. Therefore, the World Wide Web is the perfect analogy for the internet. 
thanks to new technologies, humanity could not be compared to a spider web, getting stronger every time people interact online. Not only do individuals, each intersection on that web, get empowered by new technologies, but the relationship between people, the bonds between each junction, also get strengthened. And once we zoom out, we can understand the global picture, a world where, thanks to the internet, collaboration is more accessible and where one can fully comprehend the interconnectedness of humanity. Because by its meaning, a culture is often referring to one group or society, the school culture, the American culture, the Indian culture, but now, with new technologies, it becomes possible to envision and talk about a global, pic a global culture that unites us all, no matter our religion, gender, socioeconomic background, and make us realize what it means to be human in the 21st century. In a world that's so divided and a flood of countless problems, the internet can act as a bridge between everyone on this earth. Therefore, this is my challenge for you. When you go home this evening and take out your phone to start scrolling through various social media, don't limit yourself to your routine, but see the world through a new lens and decide what you can do to contribute to our global community and share your ideas. Try to challenge your own beliefs and know more about the people in the world around you, because the only way to achieve peace is to acknowledge, accept, and embrace the world's diversity. In short, we live in a world where so much is possible, so let's do it. You could reach out to your grandmother or any other relative you haven't talked to in too long. You could discuss that book you finished reading yesterday and can't stop thinking about because it's so good. You could raise awareness about a topic that matters to you and make things change. Or you could even learn more about Phidipides, the first marathon runner. What I'm saying is that with the internet, the possibilities are endless. Thank you. <laughs>